Hi guys, so today I'm going to do what's kind of like a traveler's notebook, but this is something I've had in mind. <laughs> and then I bought these little items a while back at the Dollar Tree um, to make like a pass the time kind of book. And since my mom's getting on the plane to go back home, I thought this would be something she could take. So um, if I have any links in the description box, those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchasing them. So those links, and those would be like the basic things I have. Obviously these are from the Dollar Tree, I believe. I might have got them at one of those other like local stores. I was trying to look for crosswords that had the edge that was kind of just like, you know, bound in half and stapled like we do our inserts. But it seems like everybody is doing this nowadays. So I'm like, ah. So I'm still going to put um, a cord in there and I, I don't mind. So I did do three. I'm not doing four. They are about a quarter inch in the spine. I guess I could have done four, but I just didn't want it to be super, super thick. Um, but there are three here. I'll still do the spine the same way we do with any other traveler's notebook and then we'll make up our numbers because these are obviously a different size. Um, I think I even have one other book I could put in here but it might be not exactly the same size as these but we'll see. I got this at um, Hobby Lobby but I don't think I'm going to use this one today because I think the paper pack I'm going to use is just this one from Michael's When Life Gives You Lemons and it's a pretty paper pack. And I think I'm going to use, because I just literally need the cover. I'm not going to make this like a traveler's notebook, traveler's notebook. So I think I'm going to use this one, this front page. So cute with the foiling. I think it'd be really pretty. I got my laminating pouches. I think I have the ones from Daiso ready here. Um, but again, I'll have links to all the basic stuff in the description box. And then this um, <laughs> big cord reel, I thought I'll just go with black because it'll coordinate with the pink and things. So I think I'm going to do this one. I do like this cord. Um, again, linked in the description box. Also, I thought I had this in white too, and I don't. So I need to go order this in white because I really, this is like my favorite uh, as far as the size for the Traveler Notebooks. So I think this will work. Yeah, <laughs> just barely. So let's take some measurements and then uh, I might even write them down. <laughs> and then we'll know what we need to do. But this book is five and a quarter let's say right wide because there's a little bit so five and a quarter i want an inch spine so five and a quarter twice that's ten and a half and an inch spine that'd be eleven and a half and that's just the paper and that's if i want it to be like right on here right so let's add a little bit more let's see five and a quarter um so i said eleven and a half so i'm gonna do so it's just a little bit sticking out of here I'm only going to add a quarter inch, so that means it's going to be an eighth of an inch more paper, possibly, right, around the edges. So 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters, okay? So 11 and three quarters. Let's write that down. <laughs> oh, let me use my pretty pen friend here sent me. Okay, 11 and three quarters by... And the height, I usually just keep it about the same height. I might add a, a little bit extra that quarter inch so this is eight and an eighth so eight and three eighths would add that quarter inch it's kind of a lot though I don't really want to do the whole quarter inch Let's say a quarter inch seems it just adds another eighth and that's kind of a lot to the top and bottom so let's do an eighth that'll make it easier anyway eight and an eighth so let's say eight and a quarter tall because by the time we bind it um, I'm sorry, uh, use the, not bind it, but use the uh, laminating. It'll add quite a bit around the edges. Even in this front part, I mean, I could really go a little bit smaller than 11 three quarters, but I'll just leave it because that does, a lot of times this does end up sticking out, so you do want a little extra than the top and bottom, you know. So 11 and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Let's go for it. <laughs> and cross our fingers. Okay, so the height is going to be off of this. This doesn't, well, I guess it kind of does have a way of looking at it, right? Um, I would say it's this way. This has been sold out on Tonic. It came back. It's at on um, HSN, the Maxi Guillotine. I love it. Um, on HSN, it does cost more than it does on Craft Stash, but it's also sold out on Craft Stash. So it just depends, I guess, when you're watching this. But I'll have the links for all those because this is like my favorite. Um, I was going to get the, the smaller one just to have the smaller one, and it sold out so fast on <laughs> Tonic's website. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go get it. It was gone. Like, literally the next day, I was like, what happened? And sometimes they don't even have it sold out. It's just not there. Like, it never existed, you know? So I'm like, okay. So that was weird. Um, which also reminds me, you guys have been asking about the Craft, uh, craft Stash, the uh, Tonic Magazine, the card-making collection, number 15, which came out. It's been on Craft Stash. It's not on Scrapbook yet. 
it's not going to be on Tonic's site because apparently Tonic's not really doing that anymore. Um, the publishing house takes care of it. And so if you do want it, it's going to be on Craft Session. It's not going to have the extra die. And I don't know if that means going forward. I'm talking about the card making collection, not the official Tonic magazine that's going to launch in a couple days. Um, I guess it depends when you're watching this, but I think the email said November 4th. And I'll have a video for you guys on that day for that one. And I do also have a spread in that magazine. But for the card making collection, I don't know. It's just different. So um, from what I understand, it's not going to have an extra die. So if you want it, you can get it on Craft Stash for a really good price. Or usually you can find it like at Barnes & Noble. But again, it costs more and it's not going to have the extra die either way. So that's what I understand. But anyway, 11 and 3 quarters on this direction. <laughs> so 8 and a quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. I'm not really going to be super picky as far as explaining that too much because whatever your project is, it might be different, right? You might find these books and they might be a little different. Now the books don't have rounded edges, so I don't think I'm going to round these edges either, but I will clip them so they're not pointy um, after I laminate. And that actually reminds me, that is kind of long. So these are A4 size laminating sheets. Um, again, I get them at Daiso, so obviously they're $1.50 at Daiso. I don't know that Daiso has them on their website, um, but if you're interested, you can go to DaisoJapan.com or just Google Daiso Japan and you'll find it. They have an, an American site and they have a site that you have to buy wholesale but as you can see since it's A4 it's longer because A4 is almost 12 inch paper now there are legal size uh, pouches you can get so this will definitely fit in a legal size one I'll have the links to that because I do have those extra actually I did order those also from Amazon but as you can see this is just inside of there oh my gosh this is gonna be like exactly no room for error here <laughs> that's crazy um, so I do want to score this though before I get it in here that is something I didn't think about yet. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna... Okay, the easiest thing for me to do without having to do numbers is to just uh, fold this in half since the paper isn't super thick. And I've showed you guys this. Instead of having to like come up with your numbers, if you just fold it right in half and just being careful with that because you know sometimes paper wants to buckle or do weird things. So as you can see, I started up there and it didn't crack or do anything weird. Um, and then I'm gonna do half inch on either side of that. Now, I don't really have to bend it in the middle for this project, but I can just do the one inch spine, the one inch marks, but uh, I went ahead and did what I did. Okay, so I'm gonna do is line this up on the blue line, cause that's my uh, standard A2 size card line, so I know I can see it real well. And from there, I'm gonna go half inch, which is, ha that's a quarter and a half. Now I got that other score mark. Again, the spine is one inches. I only have three books going in here. I'm still going to put straps enough for four books because maybe later she wants to add another one. But also, so I don't have to spend the time right now thinking about how to bind with only three strings. And you guys don't have to leave me comments about it because I, I, I won't be able to even understand what you've written. So <laughs> I know if I spend some time thinking about it, I'll... I still want it to look like a traveler's notebook, so I don't want things sticking out the back, and I don't want any of that. I just want it to be nice and smooth and nice looking. So I'm still going to put the four strands. But I'm sure if I gave it five minutes of thought, I could think about how to do three strands without it looking crazy outside or, or running it out the back, which is not my preferred look. I don't like things sticking out back here other than the little bits that we put, right? Okay, so... Because to me, it's not a junk journal. Junk journals, you know, you do whatever you're doing, put things in. Okay, I'm going to plug in my uh, laminator. I'll be right back. Heat up. I didn't think, I guess I could still put a dashboard with a pen loop, right? So she can have something to write on. So uh, I'm going to take this, and maybe I'm going to double it up, because this paper is not super thick, and I want my dashboard to be nice and sturdy. So um, what were our measurements here? I already forgot. So five and something. So we can do five and a quarter, maybe. Let me measure this part because no, let's do five by eight. I'm gonna cut this down to five by eight, and I'll probably just double up the same paper. So I'm gonna go eight inches tall and then five and five on the other side. Sorry, I was just thinking about that because I was like, oh yeah, paper clips, all that stuff we can add, right? <laughs> so eight inches tall. And then five and five. And maybe I'll put a pocket on this one. Just five by eight. This one's also five by eight. And I'm gonna glue these together back to back. Uh, I guess I'm gonna use ATG. And again, I'm gonna leave this just pointy or whatever you wanna call it because 
um, just to keep the same theme, right? Everything just being kind of straight edged. But rounding it is my preference. And I'll put a pocket on it since um, this is the only thing really I'm going to laminate. So I'm trying to do this straight, but honestly if it's not straight, I can just take it back to my guillotine, like cut this little piece off, cut that piece off, you know, <laughs> make it look straight. So I'm not too worried about that. That's pretty good. Take a little bit off of this edge. Cool. I guess if I wanted to put like a little something, a little sticker or something cute, we could do that. Oh, you know what? Let me see. You know what I'll do? I will include this little clippy as one of the paper clips. <laughs> so cute. Matches really well. And maybe in here, we have some of our cute stickers from... Diamond press. I mean, these are thin. Again, you really don't want to put too much bulk because it will absolutely make a problem <laughs> when you go to laminate. Um, so that'll be one side. And on this other side, I'll put a pocket down here and then maybe another little something up here. Did that click yet? Okay. And then we'll put a pocket down here. And this time I'll remember to reverse the pocket. Hopefully you guys think this is fun. I, you know, just something I was thinking about, and here we are. Uh, let's see. Again, I'm going to place this in the pocket. Ooh, I'll put it just like this. That way I can cut all this piece off extra to use it. Now I'm just using scissors, but... Ooh, that's dangerous, because I'm not allowing myself too much. I was going to say, did I cut the side off again? Remember last time I cut into this in a funny way? <laughs> I cut into this in a very funny way. Okay, we're going to do that, that. There's a little bit extra here. I don't want that to heat up and stick in my machine or something, so let me cut this piece off. So I usually use my guillotine, but since I'm doing this in the air, I did not use the guillotine. And then I can take this piece, which is crooked. Okay. And about how much do I need? What I'm trying to eyeball is how much do I need to make a pocket down here? Let's cut that much. Oh, I think this thing is ready. You know, I'm going to take this to my guillotine just so I can straighten this out. I keep cutting crooked. Okay. That's nice and straight. And then I need it to go from here to about here. So I'm going to cut that off too. a little bit too big. Okay, so now we have these pieces, and I will round this even though we're going to take this off. Now what you're going to do with these guys, which I didn't do last time, I just left it stuck together and it's stuck together, it's just fine. You're going to take these apart and turn them around so that the stickiness, what's going to become sticky later, is on the outsides. And then you place it <laughs> here, or wherever it is that you want to place it. Um, nice and flat and that will make you a pocket because what happens is the stickiness sticks on these other areas and then we'll have a pocket here okay actually I will run this through since we're ready for it and then I'll place my outside in another pocket Again, I have the 12 by 12 machine. I need to buy like 12 by 12 pouches and see how that goes. That'll be fun. Keep this for something else later. Some people say um, with the leftover pieces, like after they've laminated, the pieces they cut off, they um, run through. Not run through. They use them for like acetate pieces, like for pop-ups or things like that. So this guy, I'm just going to get it in here as straight as I can without having a surface. Let me move this. Wow, that is like right on the edge. It's crazy. I should pull my legal letter ones out, I guess. If this doesn't work out, I'll pull out the legal letter size ones, but for now. 
Now this, that is done. Very nice. That actually looks really, really great. Now I am a little bit concerned though because I can see like an opening here. So I'm going to do it again. Just run it through one more time. You guys. I could have left myself a lot more space for <laughs> laminating. I don't know why I did it the way I did. But I did. If it doesn't work out again, I'll do it again. Um, I have plenty of laminating sheets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's much better. Look at that. Boom. Nice right on there. Up here you can tell like where it's still kind of like, bu not bubbly. You see that? Where you only see like this is holding. And then this is like dry looking. That's open. I mean, it's not even at all laminated. So I'll cut a little bit off of this. And then whatever else I might need. And I might even run it through one more time in the other direction, depending on what this looks like when it comes out right now. This side. Oh yeah, see that? Much better. <laughs> you saw where before it was only like laminated there and there. Perfect, okay. Now this guy, oh, this poor baby. She's right on there. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm put this in here really nice and straight, making sure everything's good. And this is gonna take a minute, so I'll be right back. I wanna show you, it's looking wonderful. You can tell by the edges when it comes out. Okay, I'll let it keep going. Okay. Wow. So I'm not even cutting anything off of this. I mean, I could cut a little bit off this bottom, but why, you know? So what I'm gonna do now is, before I turn this off, is I always like to bring it over here. Some people like to work this while it's still warm, like right now it still feels warm, but once you touch it on something like this, it's cold and it just starts doing its thing. But uh, what I do is I line up on my blue line and I just reinforce those guys again, just to get it going. Actually, I should do it on this side because that's what's bending back the other direction. And there to there. Let's go. Let's go for it. And if for whatever reason it pops open again, that middle one I don't really mess with too much. It's really these guys. If that's there, that's great, but I don't really need it to do anything. You know, you can give it a bend, but like I usually try not to bend it too much because there's no need to. But looks great. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I was going to do. So let me uh, turn this off and put her over here. I am loving my little pink laminator, you guys. <laughs> she does a great job. Um, again, the link in the description box for that will go to Amazon. And it will have the, under that same link, it has the 12-inch guy and the smaller, well, that's not really small, but the nine, like 10-inch opening, basically 9.5 or whatever inch opening. Okay, this is nice and straight on this side, so what I'm going to do is take that, cut off the extra, not too much, but enough. Again, you don't want to cut into that air pocket right there, because if you do, you're just going to have it delaminate. And some people don't care, like, if you have other projects you want to do, like, let's say you wanted to laminate one side of each paper, you would put your two papers together, because some people do that to do, like, cool stuff with, like, maybe the matte lamination sheets or whatever. And then you just cut into it, and you tear the things apart, but... Or take them apart. And some people like the look of that anyway, just to get really close. Because unless you're really picking at it, it's not just going to come away, you know? But for me, for right now, I'm just leaving that bubble. You get close, but not super close to expose the bubble. Okay. And then my little laminator comes with these little rounders. And that's just to take that sharpness off the edge, right? Because that's really sharp. And since I'm not going to do anything else to the cover... I was going to say I'm going to round the edge, but, you know, I use the whole thing. So these are already rounded for us because that's how they come, right? Usually on one side. Did I already do this? What's going on? Oh, you know why? Because I didn't have to cut anything. They're all rounded. <laughs> Ready to go. It's almost as if they knew that most people use a whole sheet, right? When you laminate something, you put it in there. Okay. So I have a dashboard. I have that. Get our holes. Where did I put my crocodile? Crocodile is already set to like a quarter inch in, if you can tell. Because what happens is, that's counting the plastic edge, but also going into my paper a little bit. And then I always put, I'm going to go a little bit more, because remember I went a little bit far, further out with the plastic than I normally do. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more. 
and just like before just like always we're gonna have a, a hole like right here Ugh, you know what I went too low <laughs> that's too much hold on okay it's just the next notch under a quarter of an inch that's good so we put one right in the center and then we put one on either side there and there and I'll do the same thing at the top and then I'm gonna get my crop doll the big guy and just put one hole in the center okay right. I'll be right back I guess I'll just do this with y'all we're just gonna go right into kind of like whatever I consider the center hole now if you're gonna invest in this I would say get this one first because this punches everything and if you like the crop doll better the eyelet setter puncher then get that one but it don't go further in than like two inches or so maybe an inch and a half on the paper so just something to think about um i don't know what to, i was gonna put some beads and i just came across these they're so cute but i don't know what words to put on there let me think about that maybe i should sit down i find myself always standing up <laughs> Okay, I think I'm going to put the words fun if they fit in there. Sorry. So, let's keep that to the side for now. And I have my big old roll. Again, I don't hardly ever measure this, but I do think about, like, it's going to go around a couple times. So, like, maybe to here. Okay, so about as much as I pulled out there. I'm going to go in that middle one, go down in there. Bring it up through the left, the bottom left. Again, this is the part I'm talking about. If I wanted to think about it for a little bit, I would be able to come up with something that only has three strings, but I'm still going to put four. Go up to the very top. Middle. Back through. I was going to say, oh, I'm not even paying attention to the up and down, but that doesn't matter. It's the same. It doesn't matter. Down here. Back through the middle. Like, on your way out. <laughs> There you go. Up the back, that bottom one. Up here, and I can tell already this is too much. I think it's gonna be too much. Let's see if we go up here and then come back down, yeah. The, right now that I'm here, I'm just going to adjust that so I don't have to string back through too many. Too much. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then, okay, up in here. And then back through the middle into the inside and that's where you're going to tie it off so again it's just you know working that and thinking about where you want to end up you can kind of figure out a new way of stringing this stuff let me see yeah perfect let me pull this back this way though again you don't want them guitar string tight but just you know have some tight tightness i'm just going to cut that off already but we have this. Okay. And then we're going to put our book pieces in. We have that. And then we have our outer piece. How about how big does this need to be? Something like that. But give it some tightness too. Oh, I cut it away from my fingers that time. Alright, we have the letters fun. <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to fit on here. Will it? Will it? Nah. Okay, good. Well, that's fine. Not good, but it's fine. <laughs> I do have some other letters that I could use to put something on here. Eh, maybe I'll add some dangles. Or maybe nothing, because it really is for traveling more than anything. Should be putting it in and out of her... Whatever she's holding there. I'm trying to see if there's a way, like this one. That looks good. Okay, and you can go from the inside out or from the outside in. If you want to put beads first, you're going to put the beads and then go from the outside in. I hope that makes sense. There are plenty of videos out there. I have tons of these kind of videos, so hopefully you know what I'm talking about. A lot of times I put my inserts in and then I do this, but this is what we're doing today. Okay, and these guys, I'm just going to open them up and see what I think is like the middle. Perfect. 
Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Again, they don't just go in there. Now I wonder, hmm, our crocodiles um, can cut quite a bit, right? But I don't think they can cut this thick. This is pretty thick. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that one in the background doing nothing. The one left with a knot. Or you can put both of them inside one of these guys, but I'm just going to leave it back there doing nothing. And then this guy. Again, really open them up. Get them in there. You guys. You guys. We got it. We got it. Am I super close? No, it's just it's a big book. I'm like, oh, it's so close. What do you think? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Yay! Okay, um, I'm going to add a pen and a pen loop, so let me fire up my glue gun and I'll be right back. Okay, ooh, look at that lighting. Let's wait for that to come to normal. That was weird. Uh, while that warms up, I was looking for different things. I think I'm going to put this little flower on the front. Why not? Those little lemons. And I think I'm going to stick it down, stick it down. So sometimes what happens is I'll um, put it so that you know it's removable. But I think I'm going to glue it on. So that way... I don't know. What do you guys think? I still have this. And I'm going to make two circles. And I'm just going to glue one to one and then back again. Actually, let me just cut this down. Just need two small circles. So like fold it here. Again, I'm eyeballing this. We need something big enough to cover the back. And you can definitely run this through with a circle die or whatever shape you want to use. I just think I'm going to completely attach it. You can still take it off later. You can cut it off or <laughs> whatever. Oh, look at that. I can keep the circle stuck together, actually. So I'll glue this to this and glue it to that. And remove this big backing. Let's see if I can do it with these cheap pliers. If not, I have another set. I always link these kind of things too for you guys just in case you want to add some beads and stuff and don't know where to start. It's like a starter kit and it has these three in one pliers. Oh, could have just pulled that right out. Okay. I don't want it to fall apart completely though. We have that, we have this. And then at the Dollar Tree, I had picked up these guys and I still have some. So these match perfectly, I think. So I don't have to make any paper clips. I'll fix that little guy. Too bad my little letters didn't work out for me. Is this hot enough yet? I totally forgot to plug it in when I said I was going to plug it in. I started looking for supplies, so I was like, ugh. So I wasted that time, and I am sorry. All right, let's see here. Let's put lots of hot glue. Lots and lots and lots and lots. And like I said, I can put, even now, I could just put um, a Velcro. But I think I'm just going to stick it on. That way, every time she opens it, it just stays where it is. So, that's what I'm going to do. Still let it slide, maybe. That'd be good, huh? I don't know. I guess that's going to defeat the purpose, but... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Love it. Move that there. Do its thing. And then this little guy, I just need a piece of this. And it's going to hold on to a pen. And I guess we can do the square pen. I actually ended up switching out that square pen that I gave to my friend the other day. I switched out for a different one. Ooh, this green one, huh? Oh, I guess. Well, this one's a little bit deeper green, but like this one. That'd be cute. As you do this, you just kind of want to make sure that you're going to be able to hold this guy with a little bit of snugness, right? It needs to be snug, but not too snug. So like there. I try to get as much glue in there without making it look ugly and then try to tuck it as much as you can. That way it'll Hold on to this especially well. So you kind of pushed it into the metal. Again, we could have um, made a loop that's attached to the dashboard. And I keep forgetting the last few times I made these guys to put something sticking out the top of the dashboard. I used to like to laminate like 
a sticker or something come off the top. But I have been forgetting to do that. Okay, I'm not going to use this yet because it's still hot. But I will attach it. Oh no, before we do that, we're going to open this up. Oh my goodness. So what you're trying to do is just get into that opening. You see that air bubble opening right there? That's all we're trying to cut, really. So just trying to get in there. And I'm going to have to get right up in here. You don't want to really cut into the paper. So you're doing this in a very light way. And it's possible I didn't even get it and I have to do it again like I did the other day. Where are we at? <laughs> do it again. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, you can hear the cut like. That seems about right. There we go. Now we have a little pocket there. Here, pop something in there. I don't know what, but <laughs> it's just a little extra something. Um, put that on there now. I think we're ready for our pen. And I guess we can put this guy all together. So, we can put that a little clippy on that first one, clippy on the second one, clippy in the third one. Let's put this here and then a clippy. You guys, what do you think? Oh my god, I've been thinking about doing this since I started doing the Traveler's Notebook, so I thought that's really cute because it's just another way of having some fun. And um, I mean, totally works out. I guess I could put this one in here somewhere just for fun. Oopsie, let's actually try to get some pages in there. All right. There it is. You can do this out of literally anything. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I know she's going to love it. I love it. I think it's really adorable. And oh, before I really go, I do want to show you that it still moves because the way I channeled the glue. So anyway. All right, guys. I'll have some images for you there. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.